So NASA has officially released the very first photos taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope is the newest and largest space telescope with the purpose of infrared astronomy. The James Webb is much larger than the Hubble Space Telescope and can see farther into the universe than ever before. Its 18 meter segments will be able to peer back in time to the era where stars and galaxies were first forming. These galaxies are so old that their light has been red shifted past the visible spectrum and into the infrared spectrum, which is exactly why the James Webb Space Telescope was created. Each of these 18 mirror segments, all which can be precisely controlled, will obtain the sharpest and highest resolution photographs of our universe that have ever been seen by humankind. Now, about a week ago, NASA revealed a sneak peek of a photo taken by James Webb's guidance camera, and this isn't even their main imaging camera. The guidance camera was pointing toward a group of galaxies resulting in a deep field photograph containing hundreds, if not thousands of galaxies. Yesterday, on July 11th, the President of the United States shocked us with the very first image actually taken by the James Webb Space Telescope, and this is the James Webb Deep Field. This photo shows us thousands of galaxies in detail and resolution that have never been seen before. And today, July 12th, NASA has finally released the first several photos taken by the James Webb Space Telescope, and they are absolutely extraordinary. Let's take a look. First, we have SMACS0723 or SMAX0723. This is a massive foreground galaxy cluster which is magnifying and distorting the light of objects behind them due to something known as gravitational lensing. One of the faintest galaxies in this photo lies an astounding 13.1 billion light years away and for the first time scientists are now able to determine the chemical composition of this galaxy due to the resolution and the size and the instruments on the James Webb Space Telescope. The next photo revealed is of an exoplanet, WASP-96b. It is a giant planet outside of our solar system composed mainly of gas. The planet, located nearly 1100 light years from Earth, orbits its star every 3.4 days. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have now detected strong evidence of water vapor on the surface of this planet using something known as the transit method. We will be talking about this in a minute. The next photo is the Southern Ring Nebula, or the Eight Burst Planetary Nebula, an expanding cloud of gas surrounding a dying star, or actually a pair of dying stars. Scientists knew that this was a double star system, but now NASA has revealed the central binary star system for the first time. The filamentary structural detail within the nebula itself is abundantly clear and highly detailed in this photo. The fourth photo unveiled by NASA scientists is the Stephens Quintet. It's a group of galaxies sitting 290 million light years away and it is located in the constellation of Pegasus. In this photo from Webb, you can see the gases heating up between the galaxies as they interact and collide with each other. This event will occur for the next hundreds of millions of years and is the natural process of neighboring galaxies. And finally, the Carina Nebula. It is one of the largest and brightest nebula in the night sky and is located approximately 7,600 light years away in the constellation Carina. James Webb has revealed structures in this nebula never before seen. Hundreds of new stars and structures are now unveiled through the cosmic dust. This is truly an awe-inspiring sight. So the implications of these photos is a Abundant. We have Kyle with us here from High Point Scientific who actually has a bachelor's in physics, a minor in astronomy, and is currently working through his master's in space systems engineering. Kyle is a lifelong astronomy enthusiast and he may be able to explain the implications of these photos in a bit more detail. Hey Kyle, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so what do you think about the photographs that NASA just revealed to us taken from the James Webb Space Telescope? Hey, Tegan, it's great to be here. Those images were absolutely beautiful. They were, I think, some of the best photos of the night sky I have ever seen in my life. Did you see that picture? I mean, I can see it in my background, but that picture of the uh, Carina Nebula, oh my goodness, it took my breath away. That was the most beautiful, 
beautiful thing to see. I am I I believe it was worth the hype, and it was so great to be able to see the uh, first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Absolutely, the the differences when they show between the the Hubble Space Telescope and the the resolution that they achieved with the James Webb is. I mean, it's it's night it's night and day. The amount of work that they put into this telescope is extraordinary, and it absolutely shows, in in all of these images. So I can't wait to see what they um, come up with for the for the, like the remainder of this entire project. Yeah, Tegan, there's going to be some incredible discoveries coming up. As a matter of fact, I believe I heard on the science briefing just a few minutes ago that the on Thursday they're going to be releasing the first data of taken with the James Webb Space Telescope of objects in our own solar system, so I'm really excited to hear more about that. Yeah, they, they took the, the, the first photo of the exoplanet, which in itself has some just serious implications. Can you talk a little bit more about the, the way in which James Webb is going to be detecting atmospheric compositions of exosolar, exosol, um, exoplanets and what that might mean for the future of astronomy and exoplanet research? Definitely. So in astronomy, there is a couple different ways we go about, astronomers go about detecting extrasolar planets. One of this is known as the transit method. So the transit method simply refers to when a planet goes in front of its parent star, you measure its sort of, that star's dip in the uh, apparent magnitude as a result of the shadow solar passing across the face of the star. Uh, when that happens, mm -hmm. the light from that parent star passes through the atmosphere of said extrasolar planet. And we can actually measure the sort of presence of chemicals in those atmos in the atmosphere of those extrasolar planets through a process known as spectroscopy. So um, in this case, we uh, James Webb Space Telescope was looking at an extrasolar planet known as WASP-96b. It is a a gas giant. It is about half the mass of the planet Jupiter. It is a very far distance away from the Earth at a distance of over a thousand light years. Um, and it only takes three days to orbit its parent star. And its star is a G-sequence star. So this is a very hot world that is not like the Earth in any way, shape, or form. But during these um, um, observation period, we were actually able to measure the first like indications with the James Webb Space Telescope is instruments, uh, the presence of H2O water vapor in the atmosphere of another extrasolar planet. So this is going to make things uh, so much easier for astronomers because we can look at extrasolar planets and understand their atmosphere, not only to get a better idea of how to understand our own atmosphere here on back on Earth, but we also can look for signs of potentially life. And in my opinion, that's going to be the biggest breakthrough for the James Webb Space Telescope is, you know, maybe sometime in the next year or two, James Webb will measure a transit of an Earth-like planet and find signs of what are called biosignatures. So biosignatures simply referring to presence of things like methane in the atmosphere with an oxygen-rich environment, something that could only happen if uh, methane is being generated uh, regularly. And here on Earth, that's done through life. So that's going to be really exciting to see the possible presence of, you know, finding these other, uh, you know, seeking out new life, as they would say in Star Trek. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah. So, yeah, what I find is so fascinating is that such a small object, relatively small object in the grand scheme of things, you know, 1150 light years away, we can detect what's in, you know, the, the atmospheric composition of that exoplanet, which is absolutely mind boggling. So. You mentioned, you know, there's H2O, there's water vapor in the atmosphere of that planet. Um, and the fact that we can detect that so far so far away, what does that mean for exoplanets that are much, much closer to us, for example, in Proxima? Well, Tegan, that's a very good question. Um, with regards to Proxima, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use the transit method to be able to observe um, different chemicals in the atmosphere of any planets orbiting Proxima Centauri. And the reason for that is because the plane of the planets orbiting that particular star is not tilted directly where it's line of sight with the Earth. So because of that, we don't get any transits during the uh, observational period when we're looking at these extrasolar planets. But definitely, as we look at uh, planets closer to the Earth or planets that have are very large, um, we will be able to see some great detail yeah, to be able to detect possible biosignatures of life forms 
is it's just it's just going to be absolutely revolutionary. And you said this is you know you think this is the biggest groundbreaking discovery, um, or the the you know of the James Webb Telescope to be able to detect these biosignatures. What do you think about the that that first photo that they released on the the Webb Deep Field? Um, is what what are the implications of being able to detect the composition of galaxies 13.5 billion light years away um, to like right when the galaxies started forming? What does that tell us about the the universe in general, or the future of astronomy and our understanding of the universe? It's a great question. Um, so. Let's go back a little bit and talk about why James Webb Space Telescope is infrared telescope. So as we look back further into space, what we've discovered for the past century or so is that galaxies, the further they are from the Earth, the more what's called redshifted they are. In fact, these galaxies are so redshifted that they actually appear to be visibly red in photos due to the distance, and that's a result of the expansion of the universe. Now, Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope was able to tell us that the universe the expansion of the universe was actually accelerating. That's due to a process uh, mechanism that we're not exactly familiar with yet known as dark energy. So as we look out in further into space, we see these galaxies become more red and redshifted. So redshifted, in fact, you need an infrared telescope to be able to see them. That's one of many reasons why the James Webb Space Telescope is an infrared telescope. So the James Webb Space Telescope actually took this image of this galaxy cluster with a, what's called near cam or near infrared camera. And this was only about an exposure time of 12 and a half hours from what I'm understanding. Now, any astrophotographers out there can actually relate to that number. You can get uh, 12 hours of data in. But the previous image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope took many days worth of exposures for an image that was significantly lower quality than this one. So, And James Webb, or Hubble Space Telescope was excellent already as it was, but seeing this much data come in so quickly, oh man, it was so great to see. <laughs> so, And what we're looking at here in this galaxy, picture of this galaxy is, a, um, you have one main galaxy, um, it's called SMACS0723. It is about 4.6 billion light years away from the Earth. Now, most of our audience is probably going to be familiar what exactly a light year is, but for those who aren't aware, uh, astronomers actually measure light years um, as sort of like a standard distant unit. So it's basically how far light travels in a single year. Light travels fast, but it doesn't travel infinitely fast. It takes time to travel between point A to point B. Because of that, we look at things in the cosmos not as they are, but as they were. And in this case, we're looking back in time 4.6 billion years ago. And what's cool about this photo is you can see sort of um, the effects of you know general relativity in play. You can see how many of these background redshifted galaxies are actually being magnified by the gravity of the larger galaxy in the foreground. So these background galaxies are sort of being boosted to visibility. Mm -hmm. And this was exactly what Einstein predicted in 1915 when he um, when the general theory of relativity was first released and that Einstein basically predicted that we would look out into space and we'd see gravitational lensing of distant objects by massive objects like galaxies. So this is really cool. And seeing those galaxies, oh man, the ones that were really redshifted, those galaxies are 13.1 billion light years away. So we're looking at the early universe as it was only 700 million years after the Big Bang. So that is so cool to see, and it was by far, I think, one of my favorite photos. Definitely one of the top three to see. It's it's absolutely incredible, and that was you know into my next question: is there is there one photo that particularly stands out to you as either your favorite or the one that is just revolutionarily mind blowing? Well, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but that photo of the Carina Nebula, as an astrophotographer and somebody who spends a lot of time photographing nebula, oh man, seeing this in the back of like my background, that was so beautiful to see. I love the little twists of detail that you could see in the nebulosity of the Carina Nebula. For those who don't know, the Carina Nebula is a very popular target for amateur astronomers in the Southern Hemisphere in the constellation of Carina. You can also see it here in the Southern United States. If you live um, like in the Florida Keys or in South Texas, you also might be able to see the Korean Nebula just above the horizon. So that is a home to hundreds 
of hundreds of stars being born right now. And a lot of that structure that we see in the Korean Nebula in this photo is a direct result of stellar formation, stellar wind sort of pushing it, sort of twisting it, and sort of causing these little cavities and jets shaping the, uh, sh the shape of the nebula, and it was so cool. And infrared, this is another situation where infrared does a really great job because infrared helps us to be able to peer through some of that dust that a visible telescope would not be able to peer through. And because of this, we're able to see even more stars being born. And it is just, it is a beautiful photo. I think uh, from this day, the people people are going to remember this image and the one of the uh, the galaxy cluster the most because those two were just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, like the pillars of creation to the Hubble Space Telescope, it's going to be the Webb Deep Field or the Carina Nebula to the to the James Webb Space Telescope. All right, well, yeah, that's all I have, Kyle. Thank you so much for joining us. You've been a huge contribution to the video and High Point Scientific, and we appreciate all the knowledge that you have to share with us on the James Webb Space Telescope and all the implications that it has to the future of astronomy. Thank you, Tegan, and always remember to keep looking up. So that was Kyle again, everybody, and he is in charge of writing a lot of articles on our website, doing some social media, and in charge of our live streams. And you can find all of our live streams on our YouTube channel. So we both want to say thank you so much for tuning into our video today over the photos taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. We can't even begin to comprehend the amount of incredible discoveries that this telescope is going to make and we are all excited for the entire journey. So be sure to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future videos over astrophotography or astronomy in general. If you have any questions at all regarding telescope equipment, please feel free to reach out to our non-commissioned product advisors at highpointscientific.com and we will be more than happy to assist. As always, thank you so much and clear skies.